All right, good afternoon. Welcome back to another live science demo here in my personal lab. I'm Bunsen Bernie, and today we're gonna to talk all about polymers. So polymers really excite me because not only are they really useful, they are really, really fun. So we're gonna start by looking at a couple of polymers that are very, very absorbent. So this polymer here is called sodium polyacrylamide, and it is a very hard crystal that is excellent at absorbing water. So you can see this is the same amount that I have in here. So it expanded from 20 milliliters in volume to over 150 milliliters in volume. So it's really good at absorbing water. How does it do that? Well, a polymer is a special type of molecule. What is a molecule? Can anybody tell me what a molecule is? Go ahead and write that in the chat down below. What is a molecule? So a polymer is a special type of molecule. So a molecule is a group of atoms. Sorry, my goggles are getting a little foggy here. Polymer is a grouping of atoms that are connected together. And atoms themselves are what we find from periodic table of elements. So when they start to link up, they create molecules. And with our polymers, they're very, very long chains of molecules. So they are made up of what we call monomers. So a monomer would be one part of that chain, kind of like a necklace or a chain that you might tie your bike up with. Each one of those links on there would be equivalent to a monomer. And all together, it would be a polymer. So poly means many, Mono means just one. So our polymers have some awesome properties. So I'm gonna drop in 100 milliliters of water and we'll just let that sit and we'll come back to it by the end of the show here. So again, that is the sodium polyacrylamide and it is excellent at absorbing water. Another polymer that we have this stuff here, now you might see it sold as instant snow or insta snow day. Well, this is what we call sodium polyacrylate. And it's very similar to what you find in baby diapers. Isn't that weird? So not only is it useful, as I mentioned earlier, it can be really, really fun. So this is a very light powder. And you can see we've got lots of it in here. So what I did was I placed a couple scoops inside of here and it's excellent at absorbing water. Hence why it's found in the baby diapers. So as we take this and we pour this water in here, we can see it will begin to expand. So as it absorbs that water, it's going to expand and grow in size. So just like our crystals here, our powder expanded and grew in size. And just like that, we've got lots and lots of snow. We can make it snow in here. And don't worry, I put a layer of plastic on my counter. That way I keep everything nice and clean or somewhat. Science can get a little messy sometimes, but that's what we like to do here. All right. So I'm gonna get rid of my excess water there. So again, this powder stuff called sodium polyacrylate. So it is quite a mouthful, but it is really entertaining to play with and to watch work. So it turns into a really, really fluffy powder. And looking back at our crystals here, we can see they are starting to absorb that water and expand in volume. So polymers, they're all around us. As I mentioned, the plastic that I put on my counter here is a polymer. Our fingernails are polymers. Our DNA is made up of polymers. So really, really long chains of repeating molecules. That is the key part there because there are some polymers 
that can be shorter than regular molecules, but our polymers are going to be repeating chains. Our smaller molecules might be a chain of different atoms in there, but not a repeating chain of molecules. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna make some fun polymers. So we've already talked about these, which were pretty cool, but I bet you came for this stuff here. You probably came for the slime. That's right, we're gonna be making slime today. So I made a very special ingredient for our slime, and that was simply using borax. That was simply using borax and some water, so our slime can be activated. So what I have in here is just some regular Elmer's glue. Sorry about the camera. What I have in here is just some regular Elmer's glue, white glue, and I have about 150 milliliters. So our water here, I'm gonna mix that together. So our water and our glue are gonna get mixed together. And as we do that, just gonna carefully reach over here. So as we mix our glue and water together, it gives us a better consistency for our goo, for our slime. That way it turns out really sticky and stretchy like this one here. If we don't put enough water, unfortunately, unfortunately, we get something like this one here, which breaks apart really easily. But what's really cool about this one is, if I form it into a ball here, it bounces really well. So this one almost feels like a rubber ball, while this one definitely feels like slime that is melting in our hands. So the slime does not behave like a liquid. It does not behave strictly like a solid either. You can see as I hold it in my hand, it starts to stretch out and deform. So similar to a liquid, but also having some of the properties of a solid. All right. So we're gonna get our slime made here. So I'm gonna reach over and grab my last ingredient, which is going to be our borax. So our borax, I mixed 40 grams of borax with one liter of water. So 40 grams per liter gives us a 4% solution. A 4% solution, and that's exactly what we want for our slime here. I'm gonna give our slime just a little bit of color. So we'll put blue in there and stir it up really, really well. Now again, this can get messy, but I am prepared for that. So as we add the, as we add our borax solution, the chemical that is in there is called sodium tetraborate. Everybody say that five times fast. Sodium tetraborate. It is a molecule that takes those monomers, which are in the glue, and it links them together. So it makes that chain. So that chain is not here just yet. We're gonna make that chain right now as we add our sodium tetraborate into here. And as you do this, you wanna make sure that you're stirring as you're adding your sodium tetraborate. And the reason for this is it will start to stick together. So make sure you are constantly stirring. Stir, stir, stir. And we're almost there. So you can see we've got a nice big chunk on there. And if we continue to add a little bit more. Now you wanna make sure not to add too much. That's why you'll add it slowly. That's why I'm adding it slowly here. And the reason for that is 
it will just make it very, very slimy. So I'm gonna scrape that off the side there and add just a little bit more. And then I think we're ready to take it out of our container. Now the cool part about this is the more that you mess with it, the more that you squish it around, the less sticky it becomes. So my hands will probably get a little bit messy here, but guess, that's, guess what, that's all right. It's science, science can be messy, but that's part of what makes it fun. All right. So it's actually not too bad. Now you can see it is sticking to my hand, but the more that I squish it there, the less sticky it becomes. And you want to work with it in this consistency. Again, if you add too much to it, it's gonna come out like this. So this was made with clear glue. And remember how bouncy that one was? So you can pick up all the excess there. Clean off the table just a little bit. And that is much better now. So we've got a nice, good, stretchy, sticky slime. Look at that. So if I pull it apart slowly enough, it behaves similar to a liquid. If I go very quickly, I can tear it apart just like I would a solid. All right. So, I heard a saying once, and it went something like, much is more or greater is, bigger is better, that's the one, bigger is better. So, I went ahead and prepared a little bit more slime for us to take a look at. And this one, again, was created with that clear glue. So it is kind of like jello. Oh no. All right, so it is much bigger, much better in my opinion. And this one came out really, really clear because I used a special type of glue and it was actually a powdered glue called PVA. And when I added that ingredient with our sodium tetraborate, it made it really, really clear. Okay, if that wasn't enough for you, I did make an extra special slime. Sorry about that, my microphone is pulling on us here. I did make an extra special slime, and I'll try to get it without pulling the microphone down here. And this one is made with iron oxide inside of it. So this one I made with the white glue, the standard school glue. And this one is much, much stretchier. So you can see this one stretches out really well, but not only that, if I take a small piece here and I put it in front of us, we can see it is magnetic. So our slime, we can make it mag magnetic by adding that iron into it. And it still has that really cool, really smooth texture that allows it to stretch. And you saw this one stretch probably better than any of our other ones. Whoops, not that time. So it stretches really, really well though. What's really cool about this is if we place the magnets down on the table, our slime will actually be attracted to it. So if we were to leave it on the table there like that, our slime will climb all over it. So I'm gonna attempt to grab the camera here so you can see a little bit of better view of our slime climbing onto the magnet. 
So we'll place our slime there. And you can see, I put enough in there, and these are extremely strong magnets that are allowing you, or allowing the slime to be attracted to that are allowing them to be attracted to the slime. All right, I'm gonna mount you back up here. It is alive. All right. So I don't know how much luck I'll have pulling that magnet off of the slime there. Actually, it's not too bad. That was pretty simple. And this one, easy enough. Now if I stick them in there in the big blob, I'm not sure I'll be getting them back. All right. So unfortunately, that is all we have for today. But you know what I'm gonna do? As always, we're gonna to go to the comment section for some questions. So I'm just gonna grab my iPad here and see what questions we may have. All right, so again, if you do have any questions, please go ahead and comment down below. Hi to Chelsea and Grayson, we miss you too. Where can you get the sodium? So the sodium tetraborate, I actually made that solution. This box of borax you can find at any big box store or supermarket. It is relatively inexpensive, and there are other ways that we can make slime. And if you tune in next week for Hydrogen Harry, he's gonna show you a couple other ways to make slime, not only with the sodium tetraborate that comes from the borax. That's an excellent question. All right, do we have any other questions in here? Well, a question for you then. If you're not gonna ask me questions, I'll ask you some questions. I hope you have the worksheet and you're following along. So, is our slime an example of a polymer? Yes or no? Is our slime an example of a polymer? Let me know down in the comments below and make sure you fill out that worksheet and follow along. Okay, just gonna refresh here and make sure that we don't have any comments. And I don't see any currently. Oh, here we go. There we go, we reloaded. Okay. Can you make slime using different ingredients? Absolutely. And Mr. Harry, you're gonna be showing them how to do that next weekend, aren't you? What makes polymers so strong? That's an excellent question. So polymers are very, very good at stretching out and also rebounding back to their original shape and size. And the fact that polymers are made up of long chains of molecules, not just little parts, it makes them a lot harder to break down. And this is part of the reason that our plastic containers, our plastic bags will last so long, unfortunately, in the ocean. If we don't take care to dispose of these properly, these can last for hundreds of years. And that's because there's no animals or creatures that we know of that readily consume all of these things and eat those giant molecules. That's an excellent question. Flora Jasmine asks, can you make the magnet slime glow in the dark also? So unfortunately, I have not tried that yet. 
I would see a problem with the fact that this is so dark. So mixing in our glow powder, I'm not sure how well that would work. It is definitely an experiment for my buddy Hydrogen Harry to try out next week. So if you tune in next week, we're gonna see, did that work? Why is the sodium slime, this question comes from Michelle Hedrick, why is the sodium slime stretchier than the others? So it doesn't have anything to do actually with the sodium tetraborate, it actually has to do with the starting ingredient that we have. So the chemicals in the white glue, the Elmer's glue are gonna be a little bit different than the chemicals in the clear glue. So again, that's what's affecting what we have here. It's what is being linked together and the polymers that are being created. So these polymers that are created here are much, much stretchier than the polymers that we had created with our clear glue. These are some awesome questions. Thank you guys. And I'm going to refresh one more time to make sure I don't miss any questions. But I do want to thank everyone for their questions and for, them to for their time. Okay, made sure to scroll back. Okay. Hi from Brayden. Hi Brayden. How did you make different colors? So very simple. I made sure to mix in our food coloring before I put in the sodium tetraborate, before I put in our bonding agent or our, our polymer maker. So make sure you mix this into your liquid ingredients. So you can mix it into either or. If you wanted to mix it into your sodium tetraborate, you can mix it in there or mix it in with your glue. And again, I just watered down my glue, made it a little bit easier to stir, and it also gives us a stretchier end product. Okay, this one comes from Miko. Is raw eggplant a polymer? So on the outside, I'm sure the skin of the eggplant is actually a polymer. So polymers, again, are all over in nature. So the eggplant itself is not a polymer, but there are gonna be polymers in there. Also, the DNA of the plant is gonna be a polymer, as well as that skin, that outer covering is going to be a polymer. Okay, this one comes from Edmund, age six. Why did the slime stick to the magnet? Well, I put in a special ingredient. So magnets don't stick to everything. And I think I lost my magnets in here. There it is. So magnets do not stick to everything. We can see they won't stick to the glass for us. And if I put it on this slime here, it will not be attracted to it. What I put inside of here, there is some iron, and iron is excellent at attracting magnets. So iron inside of the slime pulled on the magnet, and that's why we get this really dark colored slime. I didn't put any color in here. I just put the iron oxide powder inside of here and allowed it to get that really cool gray color. Okay. This one comes from Wellington Laura Jr. Is store-bought slime made the same way or different? So there are dozens and dozens of different ways to make slime. So if you buy something like Silly Putty, it's going to have this more opaque color to it, but it's gonna feel more like our clear slime here. Same as if you buy clear slime, sometimes you get slime that is really, really runny, really stretchy. So depending on the ingredients that they use, some will make it just like we make it here. The sodium tetraborate is a really, really popular, really common ingredient. And again, as we, as I mentioned earlier, 
Hydrogen Harry next week is going to be working on some different ways to make the slime. But this is a very popular ingredient and very readily available in a lot of different products. So you'll be able to see that again next week. Okay, so just one more refresh here. Miko asks, is raw egg a polymer, not eggplant? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so there are polymers within the yolk as well as within the egg whites. And that's why sometimes if you grab onto the egg yolk, if you go to separate it out, you can see that the egg whites are very similar looking to our slime here. So they are very sticky, very stretchy. And in fact, the coating, the shell of the egg, is also a polymer. And it's similar to our fingernails. All right. Glad I went back and asked that question there. Or re, uh, refreshed my page for that one. Okay. And our final question. This one comes from Leah Corsino. Is there any way to make the slime stretcher? stretchier. So is there anything else that can make the slime stretchier? Absolutely. Changing up your ratios for your ingredients. So if you add more water to it, I find that it does water it down and make it a little bit stretchier. If you don't add the sodium tetraborate, our polymer ingredient too quickly, it will allow it to make better polymers and as they go in slowly, they're going to stretch out a little bit better. So what happened with these, the polymers bond too quickly and they create shorter molecules. So what you want to do is add it slowly and make sure to stir constantly to make longer molecules. Okay, and I hear that we have one more question on here. So just reload one more time here. Okay. This one comes from Courtney. How long will our homemade slime last? Will it mold or evaporate over time? Well, if you leave your slime out in an open container, it will actually dry out just like glue. So if we left our glue open in a container, it'll dry out. And that's exactly what would happen with our slime. Now, the mold question. So we are touching our slime and it is picking up all sorts of germs and mold particles possibly from our hands. So you wanna make sure that you do wash your hands really well for at least 20 seconds, sing your favorite song. You want to make sure that you do wash your hands very thoroughly before playing with your slime and of course after playing with your slime. But as long as you keep your hands clean when you're playing with it, keep it in a sealed container, it can last for months. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's science lesson, today's live demonstration. We are going to be live again next Friday at 3 p.m. where Hydrogen Harry will take over with the Slime Mania. He's going to show you how to make a couple different recipes and he's going to even talk about a couple other polymers that we have here at the Science Center. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy.